AITA for refusing to have my dad in my life after he chose his new family? When I was 13, my dad had an affair, left my mom, and moved in with his affair partner, whom I'll call Jane. At first, my sister and I would visit every weekend. I'll admit he was a good dad, even though I never liked Jane. When Jane got pregnant and had their son, our visits became less frequent and my dad focused more on his new family. He missed some of my recitals and my sister's competitions because he was busy with his son. When I was 16, Jane decided to move for a new job opportunity. My sister and I begged my dad not to leave us, but he said, I need to prioritize my family. He moved 10 hours away, which pretty much ended our relationship. I decided to go without contact, as it was clear he didn't consider me family. My younger sister stayed in contact with him. He would try to call me and offer for me to visit with her, but I refused. When he came back to see my sister, I would refuse to speak to him when he turned up at the house. I didn't invite him to my high school or college graduation. I'm now 33 and have remained in no contact with him. Over the years, he has repeatedly tried contacting me and getting his family to reach out on his behalf to reconcile. I have avoided family events in case he attended, including my sister's wedding and baby showers. Three months ago, my dad and his family moved back to our hometown, and he has been relentlessly trying to reconcile. I've received messages from my half-brother and sister wanting a relationship, saying he's a great dad. My dad found out I'm getting married and keeps trying to contact me. He even tried to speak to my fiancé. Jane messaged me, saying I have broken my dad's heart repeatedly and that I'm pathetic and should get therapy. I replied that she was nothing but a home-wrecking BH and then blocked her. Everyone seems to want me to let him back into my life. I'm sick of all the harassment and accidentally bumping into my dad and his family in town. Whenever I see him, I just walk away and refuse to speak to him. Everyone says he's a good dad who tried his best to remain in contact, but I pushed him away. The pressure comes from all sides. My mom, sister, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and even some of my friends. My fiancé has even started saying I'm the AH for shutting him out. Edit. I'm going to have a serious conversation with my fiancé. As most of you pointed out, he should have my back. If he continues to defend my dad, then I'll have to wonder if this relationship should go any further. We are 12 weeks out from the wedding but need to sort this out sooner rather than later. For more context, I own a local business, so moving away is not an option. I live in a small town where everyone knows everyone, and he is friends with many people, including my fiancé's family. My dad didn't come back for me. He came back because Jane's parents needed help and care. He hasn't financially supported me since I was 17. He withheld my college fund to try and blackmail me into having a relationship with him, so I had to work and get loans. I've avoided events because my family uses them as a chance to force reconciliation. He also won't leave me alone and make scenes. He'll come up to me talking as if nothing has happened, try to hug me, or start crying. When he left my mom for Jane, he only wanted us on the weekends. My mom offered him 50-50, but he refused. I didn't like Jane and was standoffish with her because I knew what they had done. My sister was too young to understand and was more accepting of her. Jane was mean to me but nice to my sister. When I was at my dad's, I felt uncomfortable, and she would purposely leave me out of fun activities or plan things purely for my sister. We had a few arguments over minor things, but my dad always took her side. My dad and I used to have daddy-daughter dates at least once every two weeks. Jane put a stop to that. When she had my half-brother, we went from visiting every weekend to once every six weeks. My dad was MIA and had finally gotten his precious son. He stopped trying with me. When they moved, I was so upset that he chose to leave us. He didn't want custody, just for us to visit him occasionally and speak to him on the phone. He was parenting at a distance, so all his focus was on his new family. When I graduated from high school and refused to invite him, everything blew up. Jane called me terrible names, as did my dad, and he refused to give me my college fund unless I started being part of the family again. From what I gathered, he spent it on his new family. I'm sick of being the one to miss out on events with my family. I would be willing to be in the same room but not interact or even be civil, but he pushes things and makes it impossible. Update. I just spoke to my fiancé. He knows my history with my dad and Jane. I explained to him that siding with my father and pressuring me was hurting me. As my fiancé, he should be supporting me. Luke, my fiancé, told me he couldn't support something he knew was wrong. He said he had spoken to my father and understood both sides of the story. He believes that if we sit down and talk, we can sort this out and reconcile. I told Luke I didn't want this and wanted no contact. I asked why he was even speaking to my father. Luke admitted that his dad, who was friends with my father, encouraged him to hear my father out. Luke said my dad loves me very much and always wanted to be in my life. He has pictures of me, likely from my family since my social media is private. Luke said my dad is heartbroken over our relationship state and believes I was unreasonable about his moving away when I was young. He said I got off on the wrong foot with Jane and wasn't innocent in the relationship's breakdown. Luke told me that everyone sees the truth except me and that I'm the problem. Needless to say, I broke down crying and asked why he was doing this to me instead of supporting me. Luke claims to love me but won't stand by and watch me be a heartless BH. After he said this, I stood up, told him he shouldn't marry a heartless BH, and walked out. I'm currently sitting in my car. My phone is blowing up with Luke trying to contact me, but I don't want to speak to him. 
I feel like I'm losing everything, and no one understands what's happening. Update 2. I agreed to meet my dad to talk, and try to get him to back off, and leave me alone. I asked my mom to arrange it, just him, and no one else. I wasn't sure if he would agree, but within 15 minutes of her calling, he was at the door. I asked my mom to stay, and mediate. Here's a summary of the conversation. Me. I asked him to give me space, stop trying to get everyone on his side, and let me live my life. I told him he stopped being my father when he moved 10 hours away. I told him Jane was mean to me, and recounted all the horrible things she had said over the years. I hate how he chose Jane and his new family over me, prioritizing them and basically telling me I wasn't family. He was an AH for withholding my college fund, trying to blackmail me, and then spending it on his new family. I hate missing major family events because he attended them and made things awkward. I don't see his son and daughter as my family, and am tired of them trying to speak to me. He keeps making scenes every time he sees me, making me look like the bad guy. He keeps inserting himself into my life, attending my fiancé's family events, talking behind my back, and swaying Luke to his side. I hate how he cheated on my mom, broke our family, and then listened to Jane, who stopped our dates, missed my recitals, reduced contact, and focused more on his son. He said, he loves me and always has. He won't give up trying to reconnect, and has given me enough space over the years. He's done hearing about my life secondhand, and doesn't want to miss any more. He loves Jane and doesn't regret his past because he wouldn't have her, or his two kids otherwise. He wishes he had ended his marriage with my mom differently. His kids are innocent, and I shouldn't take it out on them. They just want to know their big sister. I was a difficult child who was rude and disrespectful to Jane, breaking her belongings, calling her names, and ruining day trips. When Jane got pregnant, she was high risk, and my arguments stressed her out, so he stopped weekend visits for her and his son's sake. He still spoke to us on the phone and took us out for dinner and day trips, but no sleepovers. His son was born prematurely with health complications, meaning he spent weeks in the hospital and had frequent admissions. Jane had PPD, so he couldn't see us much and miss some events. Jane couldn't get a local job, and the opportunity was too good to pass up, so they moved. He came back to town for weekends as much as possible to see us and invited us to fly out and spend vacations with him. He called daily, but I refused to speak or see him. They flew in for my graduation, but I refused to invite him. He lost his temper and withheld my college fund. He apologized and tried to fix it a few weeks later, but I refused the money. He hasn't spent it. It's still available if I ask. He visited me at college to talk, but I refused to see him. He won't miss family events. He makes a scene because he misses me and wants to talk and reconcile, but I always run away or shout insults at him and Jane. He's tried for 16 years to reconnect, but I shut him down. He just wants to be my dad. He's old friends with my fiancé and hoped he could talk sense into me. He feels I never gave Jane a chance, no matter how she tried, and hoped we could be civil. Jane hates knowing I talk badly about her, and mean to her children, and won't speak to him. My dad is in therapy and wants me to join him for family sessions. He wants me to spend time with him one-on-one. -on -one. To stop being rude and mean to his children and spend time with them. Stop trash-talking Jane to everyone and give her a chance. Invite him and his family to my wedding and let him walk me down the aisle. I want him to stop talking to my friends and getting others to talk to me on his behalf. Keep Jane away from me completely. To be civil at events or in town, provided he does not try to hug me or talk to me. My mom told him he was unrealistic about some of his wants, especially regarding Jane and his other children. So we agreed on a compromise. I will attend three therapy sessions with him when he arranges them. My mom thinks I need individual therapy as well. He will stop interfering in my life and relationships. He will keep Jane away from me and talk to his kids to give me space. I will be civil to him in public as long as he respects my personal space and doesn't approach or pressure me. As for my fiancé, I still haven't spoken to him. He turned up at my mom's, but she refused to let him in. He keeps blowing up my phone, and so do his family and friends, telling me to hear him out. During my conversation with my dad, I found out he paid for most of the vendors and services for my upcoming wedding, and they've been on speaking terms longer than I thought. Luke told me his family paid for these, and I believed him. I feel betrayed and can't trust him. I'll have to speak to him eventually, but I'm not ready. Update 3. The deal with my dad is off the table. He couldn't even manage a week without overstepping my boundaries. So there will be no therapy sessions with him, and I will remain out of contact. As you are all aware, after speaking to my dad and agreeing on a way forward and my conditions, keep Jane away from me. Tell his kids to back off. Don't pressure me or invade my space. It lasted all three days. Everyone seemed happy I had forgiven my dad and told me so. My sister was excited, and I was willing to give him a chance. With some pressure, I agreed to have dinner with just her and my dad. When my sister and I arrived at the restaurant to meet our dad, he was not alone. He had invited Jane, my grandparents, his son, and his daughter. He got up and tried to hug me. I immediately became upset, asking why they were there. My dad told me that if we had any hope of repairing our relationship, I had to accept Jane and my younger siblings. I told him he just broke our deal and to never contact me again, and he tried to leave. He refused to let me leave and grabbed hold of me. When I say all hell broke loose, I mean it. I started shouting at them. My dad, Jane, and grandparents tried to gaslight me and convince me to sit down. 
When that didn't work, things got very heated. A shouting match started, and a lot of unforgivable things were said by my dad and Jane, including remarks about my appearance and calling me a psychopath. My half-brother walked out of the restaurant, and my half-sister started to cry. My sister actually surprised me and defended me, shouting at my dad for ruining things after all this time when I had finally given him a chance. She even slapped Jane. She got me out of there and apologized to me. I think this was the first time she had really seen how Jane was with me and how she treated me. She kept saying she couldn't understand how dad had spent years saying he would do anything to have me back, and then would do this when he finally got his chance to rebuild the relationship. My dad has been trying to contact me, but I have blocked him and refused to talk to him. I have also refused to speak to my grandparents. My dad has tried to convince my mom and sister to speak to me, but I think he's burned his bridges with them. The incident at the restaurant has spread, and some people seem to be backing off. Like I said, what my dad and Jane shouted at me was unforgivable, and they were overheard, and this is a small town. Hopefully people will back off, and for those who won't, I'm going to have to cut them out. My sister is very unhappy with my dad and Jane for not speaking to them. She is blaming them for my going out of contact again. My sister is not letting them see her kids. I don't know if my sister will reconcile, but right now she is furious. My mom is also furious and apparently had a few choice words with my dad and Jane, and she has promised she will never pressure me again to speak to him. I am going to go to individual therapy. I think I definitely need it. I do feel bad about my half-siblings, as they haven't done anything wrong. And I am maybe open to having a distance kind of relationship with them in the future, but I'm not ready yet, or if I'll ever be. I did send them a message on Facebook to apologize and tell them they'd done nothing wrong. To my fiancé, well, I spoke to him yesterday about everything. I had been radio silent since walking out on him. Basically, he was pressured by his father to speak to my dad, and was fed a sob story of a misunderstood father desperately wanting to be in his daughter's life. Luke had become annoyed with me refusing to attend his family events and walking out of his mother's birthday party when I realized my dad and Jane were there, as he was getting pressure from his family about me ruining their events. He just wanted everyone to be happy and get along clearly at my expense. Luke admitted that my dad had paid for some of the vendors for the wedding, but he did not know this until after it was already paid. His father had told Luke that he and his mom had paid. My dad had told Luke it was a gift and his way of contributing. Luke admitted that my dad had asked him to speak to me on his behalf. I told Luke he had betrayed my trust, and I couldn't see myself marrying someone who did not support me. He broke down, crying, apologizing to me, and promising to never do it again. Luke was heartbroken and begged for a second chance. To those of you who wanted me to break up with him, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we are going to try and work through this. Apart from this issue, he had been the best partner, and I genuinely think that he had been manipulated by his family and my dad. Luke has promised to stand up to his family and go out of contact with my dad. I'm still living at my mom's, as I still need some space, which I won't have if I move home. We are going to contact our wedding vendors and see what our options are next week. Luke is begging for a postponement rather than canceling it altogether. We may still break up as actions speak louder than words and I need to see if he can rebuild what we had and show me I can trust and depend on him. Update 4. Firstly, I have canceled the wedding. I was able to get some partial refunds, but I have lost some money. Luke begged me not to cancel the wedding, but there was no way I could marry him after what he did. I was set on giving him a second chance and he promised me he would go out of contact, stand up to his parents, and issue an ultimatum that we would not tolerate any contact with my dad and Jane. Basically, he would tell them we would not attend any event or party if they were invited, and we would not tolerate any attempt to force contact or relationship with my dad. He met with them to explain this to them. When he came back from this meeting, he was quite irritable with me and appeared to have had a change of heart. To summarize, he was trying to convince me that his family only meant well, and that he couldn't go low contact with them because he loved them and couldn't dictate their friendships. He then tried to convince me it wouldn't be an issue in the future, and his father would speak to my dad and tell him to be on his best behavior in my presence. As soon as I heard this, people's comments went through my head, the main one being that if we had children, he would take them to his family, where my dad and Jane would be, and I would have no control over this. That moment, I realized I couldn't trust Luke and never would be able to. I broke up with him. He is not taking it well and keeps begging me to take him back, saying that he would have no contact with his family. His family and friends are trying to convince me, on his behalf, not to end our relationship. He has made his choice and proven to me that he is spineless. I don't need him in my life. In regards to my dad, I'm looking into getting a restraining order. Given what happened in the restaurant, I might be able to, but I don't know yet. A friend of mine is helping me look into this. My dad has kept a low profile since last week. Apart from a couple of attempts to apologize to me, I haven't heard much from him. My sister still won't speak to him or Jane. Unlike me, my sister is highly confrontational and has blasted him and Jane on social media about what happened at the restaurant and things that have happened in the past that I didn't know about. My sister and Jane had a very public screaming match when she saw them in town due to my sister's posts and demands to take them down. It ended up with Jane assaulting my sister. My dad apparently sided with Jane in this. My sister now hates Jane and refuses to speak to our dad, who is also trying to contact her. My dad and Jane's reputation seems to have taken a hit, and between the incident in the restaurant and my sister's fight with Jane and the numerous Facebook posts about them, people are gossiping. 
This has worked well for me because some people have backed off, which I'm happy about, but unfortunately, there are a few people still on his side, including my ex's parents. As for my half-siblings, there's not much of an update in regards to them. I've found a therapist. However, there is a bit of a waiting list before I can start my therapy. I'm still living with my mom, who is completely by my side, and I have found a kitten and will pick her up next week. Update 5. Firstly, I'm still at my mom's, and I got my little kitten. I've named her Sasha, and she is the sweetest thing but very energetic. For those of you asking for pictures, I'll try, but she refuses to stay long enough to get one that's not blurred. I love her already. My mom continues to be my rock. I'm still waiting for therapy, but I'm finding Reddit useful and therapeutic, and the support I've received from most of the people on here has been great and helped me see things more clearly, so a big thank you to everyone. As for my ex, now that we've broken up, I feel lighter and freer, and being away from him has made me see all the red flags that I was blind to in our relationship and feel like I've dodged a bullet. Luke, using real names because my posts were discovered, is not taking the breakup well and has taken over from my father, constantly bothering me. If you read this, Luke, we are done, and I'm not changing my mind, so stop calling me, stop coming to the house, and stop sending me flowers. I'm moving on, so you should too. My sister Emma is still firmly on my side and has washed her hands of Jane, the stepmonster, and they are not on speaking terms after my sister told everyone about Jane's affairs. Jane is still trying to save face, saying my sister is lying and telling everyone she can how we are just the worst and that we have treated her terrible over the years and are trying to ruin her marriage. I don't think anyone is buying what she is saying. She has sent abusive messages to me and my sister, and when we've bumped into her, she's been screaming at us and threatening us. My sister's car had been keyed, and my store windows were smashed. We can't prove it's her, unfortunately, but she is the most likely culprit. My half-siblings are definitely my dad's children. They tested them years ago when she was a baby. From what I've heard, they're not speaking to Jane at all. As for my dad, he seems to have grown a spine and has kicked out Jane. She is now living with her parents. From what I've heard, he's thinking about divorce. I haven't had any contact with my dad except for a text saying he was sorry for everything. As for getting a restraining order, I'm more concerned about getting one against Jane at the moment.